tracheocutaneous nerve called MBC. It's a skinner. It's, it goes to your skin. When they say medial brachiocutaneous, literally it's going to the brachial part. This is brachial. That's what we call brachial practice, right? Brachial, anti-brachial, arm form. In medicine, we have to be fancy. We can't be using smaller arm form. It's regular Joe Blow does that, right? So, we said the skin here, you can feel it, right? It's innervated by the medial, medial, right? the medial aspect of your arm, brachiocutaneous. And the medial anti brachial cutaneous sounds like a long word for a nerve that just goes all the way all the way here and you can feel it that's it, it just goes to your skin so when I poke you like ah that hurts yeah it's, that's this nerve are they clinically significant? no if, if you never know how to you know, figure out somebody's poking you on your arm etc you're gonna burn your hands you know but we got all the mechanism in place so don't worry about those just know them they get tested but nothing significant now we're done with the cords can you see we almost there? Now let's get to the bread and the butter. Next, do you know how I wanted to actually label this area? I'm gonna erase this line because it's very, very annoying. The whole point of just showing you that like, rubber tree drinks cold beer on a regular afternoon, that would be nice because it's kind of nice and hot out here, out here. Let's go to the branches. Okay? Okay, good. The mnemonic to actually label this aspect. I want you to go like this. This is how I want you to label it. And you start M A R M U. Marmon. You're like, what? It's important that you know this. Because I noticed what students do. When it's not labeling, then they flip this to radial or ax axillary nerve. And they don't like which one comes from. Is it radial or is it axillary? Then you start to screw yourself up. Just M A R M U. Where M, the first M will be what? Musculocutaneous. This will be your axillary, radial, median, nerve. And your own nerve. That's it. So now let's talk about what these guys do. What muscles? I know medical students have questions. But I'm gonna make sure you get this. What muscle does the musculocutaneous muscle uh, nerve innervate? Uh, BBC. BBC. What's that? Oh wait a minute. Did I just say BBC? Oh, that's a television station. Who cares about that? BBC stands for biceps, the brachialis, and the coracobrachialis, baby. Yes! Oh, are you guys feeling it? The Broadcasting Corporation of the United Kingdom is innovated by the muscular cutaneous nerve. Can you believe that? That's a beautiful mnemonic. That's how you remember it. BBC musculocutaneous, right? So it's gonna be your biceps, this guys, a little bit of your brachialis muscles, which is right there, and the coracobrachialis, which comes from the coracal process all the way down to like the media aspect of your humerus, right? And you're done. You don't have to worry like biceps with your job. No, that's it. Moving on. Any clinical application? No. You know there is, I'm not gonna do you wrong, I'll do you justice. There's no clinical application. The only clinical application doesn't apply to the nerve. If somebody ruptures a bicipital tendon right in the uh, intercondylar groove right here, you know, and they get Popeye sign, and you think like they actually like have muscles, and no, uh, it's it's just a ruptured tendon, and the muscle just retracts back. But there's really no clinical application. But should you remember this? Oh yeah, I will. Remember that. Now let's move on to axillary nerve. Axillary nerve. What muscle does it innervate? Wait a minute. The deltoid and your teres minor. I'm telling you, it's extremely important that you know that. Because what would happen if I knock out your deltoid? I'm going to be like, oh, Mr. Jones, can you raise your arm all the way above like this? And they do this. Oh, what's wrong? That's how far I can go. Why? 
because you need the middle deltoid to actually carry the action all the way perpendicular to 90 degrees. So, it has some nice clinical application. So, when a patient comes to the hospital and like, Doc, you know, I, I fell from the top of a, you know, driving uh, monkey bars, which are, you're not supposed to be doing that, right? And like, I can't move my arm. How far can you go? They go, oh! Right? Now, I'm so sorry. You know why I said that? There is a clinical application to the supraspinatus muscle, uh, nerve. If you knock that guy right out, you can't go the first 15 degrees. So the question will be like, oh, Mr. Jones came to your office and you're like, oh, um, can you put your arms in the first 15 degrees? Like, nah, nah. Or they do this. They lean so their arm goes 15 degrees. Oh, see, I can do it. No, you can't. I told you to do this. So that's how you catch them. They're lying because they'll, they'll basically tilt and side bend their body all the way to get that first 15 degrees because they can't do it. Then they do that. But I caught you because you cheated. You can't do that. So that's actually a clinical application. Remember that. Now, axillary again, we talked about. Teres minor is the muscle that allows you to basically externally rotate. See that? You push your hands that way. Any clinical applications? Not at the moment. Radio nerve. Now, this guy is the best. I'm telling you, he is the best. You're like, why is he the best? It's the best nerve. It is literally the best nerve. Well, like, what is he talking about? You know why he's the best? Because that's the mnemonic for the muscles that he innervates. No! Why? I'm like, yeah, wait a minute. Brachio radialis. All the extensor muscles of your hands, your supinator, and your triceps muscle. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. Seriously. It is the best. It takes over the brachial radialis, which is right there over your arm, all the extensors muscles, your supinator, right, and your teres minor. Oh, I'm sorry, your tricep muscle. Now, this is extremely, you gotta know this. This is on the boards, it's on the wards, everywhere. So, it's gonna, I'm gonna give you a clinical scenario. Um, Brian is a 10 year old kid. He fell on a, you know, was running, he fell down, bam! On his way down, he stretched his arm, and he, basically, something stuck him right on his arm on his way down. And now he has to go on crutches. Now it's starts to grow on crutches and he's moving. Oh, 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 then it comes like that. You know, my head's kind of been looking like this lately. I don't know, I can't move it up. Where are you gonna see the dysfunction, like the, the nerve dysfunction? If somebody's on crutches, what actually happens is they're gonna compress the nerve right here. So the triceps will be out. So they can extend their arm and they're going to get wrist drop. Believe it or not, they will. Now, it's different from somebody that gets a fracture of the shaft around the radial groove of the humerus. Where do you think they're going to have a problem? Are they going to have a problem extending their arms? Are they going to have wrist drop? Guess what? They're only going to have wrist drop. You know why? It's because the radial nerve actually gives us this branch to the triceps in the axillary. So, if you actually fracture your uh, humerus right radial groove, it doesn't affect the triceps. It knocks out your supinator because you can't put a screwdriver, right? You can't do this. It extends the arm so you get the wrist drop, right? Because why do you actually get wrist drop? Because it's, it's not actually because the nerve is out. It's because, remember, Newton third law says action and reaction are equal and opposite. If I push against something right now, if we get equal and opposite, nothing moves. So if I do like this, what you don't realize is the only reason I'm able to put my hands this way is because my flexor muscles that allow me to flex like this, all these guys here, and the extensor muscles are balanced. If this guy's out, that's what I get. You, you, can you see the logic becomes wrist drop? Exactly. That's why the radial nerve is the best muscle. Should I know that? Oh, I would know that. It's one more thing. Right here in the anatomic snuff box, the radial nerve gives us...
Hey, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you learned a lot. Are you studying for the USMLE Step 1 or Step 2? Are you studying for the NCLEX or you're currently in nursing school as a nursing student? Are you a PS student currently in school or studying for your PANS exam? Or are you a nurse practitioner student or trying to take your MP board exam. Listen, I've got super awesome content for you. If you truly love this video and it simplified your learning process, I want you to check out my website below. I've listed all the list of exam, whether you're studying for any of this board exam, and all I want you to do is click on the link right now below so that you can take you directly to my website. For USMLE, just go to smashusmle.com. For NCLEX, go to crushnclex.com. And if you're studying for the PANS exam, the nurse pr practitioner exam, or you're studying for your internal medicine board exam, just click below and take you directly to ftplectures.com. Listen, I can't wait to help you. If you need to get in touch with me, just get to my website, you're able to reach me directly, and we can work together one-on-one. -on -one. Listen, you're super awesome, and my goal here is to help your dream come true. If you wanna be a doctor, wanna be a nurse practitioner, a registered nurse or physician assistant, I'm here to help you get to that next level. With your medical knowledge, let's save the world together. I love you guys. You guys are super awesome. And do not forget to click on the link below to be able to get to my website. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You guys have a great day. Let's go.